Welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so glad you're here, Mama. Today on the show, I have Sarah Strong, and she is coming to us to talk a little bit about stillness, which I think is so needed now more than ever. So Sarah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for accepting to be on the Make Life Fun Show. Welcome. Thank you, Josie. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yes, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you to having this on your heart, the stillness Mm -hmm, piece mm -hmm. on your heart today? Sure. So I'm originally from Australia and I am a global traveler. So I haven't really stayed in Australia much in my life. I traveled, I lived in London for a long time. I moved to Miami in 2018, of which that's where I learned how to become a coach. And the gifts that I had prior to that, I am empathic, psychic, medium, a channel, and telepathic. There's all of those gifts and that enables me to tune into spirit, to open channels to spirit. And just so your, you know, your audience, all you beautiful people out there know, I will be channeling most of the time today. You know, so when I'm talking about myself, I don't need to channel that. It's knowledge that I know. And when wisdom comes through, when talking about the stillness, the stillness wants to channel through. It's the literal energy of the stillness that wants to be heard and be seen and be known in humanity right now because we're all waking up the world is waking up if you were awake you were having more and more awakenings or coming into newer and newer iterations of yourself and the stillness that wants to manifest on this planet right now she or like she she's coming through as a she she wants to channel through me today. So all of those gifts enable me to hold space in this way to really allow the energy to have a voice. Yes. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. And yeah, I would like to know what you need from me to be able to get this out, this message out. Well, just, it's a conversation. If you have questions that you would personally would like to ask, if you have questions that your audience that you know your there may come up for your audience we can tune in we can have moments of silence <laughs> in the stillness if you like so that we could even i can channel in what the collective consciousness's response might be to this channel so there's all those kinds of things we go with the flow we can and and stay in that stillness like Mm -hmm. speak into the stillness and ask the stillness what what she would like as well so yeah there's not nothing specifically from you but maybe some flexibility within the session so that we can be feeding into exactly what everyone wants to hear Yes, absolutely. So the biggest thing for us and the listeners of the Make Life Fun Show is, as I was talking about, is that self-acceptance piece and finding that self-acceptance within themselves, feeling safe enough to feel that self-acceptance within themselves. And that is the biggest thing, especially as a mom. And what I found on my journey is that self-acceptance piece has allowed me to be a better mom, to be a better wife, to be a better Josie. And so that is the message here that we talk about on the Make Life Fun Show. So for you on your journey to self-acceptance, I would love for you to share. Mm -hmm. Um, That's really beautiful. Thank you. And my journey is, has been a long and very arduous (laughs) journey as I was born into a home, quite a Pentecostal Christian home, or I would call it fundamental Christian Christianity because it wasn't based in lots of spirituality it was based in a lot of judgment that the god was a a god of judgment so i never accepted myself for many 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 years my mother was bipolar and had narcissistic tendencies that was very it interrupted my own inner process my own inner growth if you like so i didn't have any acceptance 
self-acceptance as a child, coming into being a teenager, into being a young adult. I went into drug and alcohol abuse for a long, long time, like more than 20 years. Then I started to realize that I needed help and I couldn't go within, you know, so I, I had a spiritual life. I, I was living a spiritual path, but the alcohol and drugs getting in the way stopped me from all self-acceptance. So I started to get some help. I went into recovery and I was in recovery for eight years. I am no longer in, I have gone into more of a spiritual journey and I no longer see the need to, to drink. I came into this deep knowledge of myself that I felt like I was an inherently bad person before I got sober. And then after that, I understood after doing my steps a few times that I started to understand that I was just sick, you know, that I just had an illness that that was connected to alcoholism. And then as I moved out, even out of into more of a spiritual journey, I realized that I started to gain self-love. I started to grow in self-acceptance and knowing that all of my journey, every single thing that I have done, every single thing I've experienced and felt, even thought or the mistakes I've made, it all helped me. <laughs> You know, it was all happening for me, not to me. And so I started to accept, I started to see my journey as part of my gift mm -hmm. that I can share with the world. You know, if I sat up here and went, oh, yeah, I've had the perfect life. Yeah, I've accepted myself the whole time. Everyone would think I'm just totally full of shit, you know, or my story it would not be as impactful mm -hmm. as I would want it to be. So, you know, it gives me merit as a human. I have struggled for, I struggled for many years. I'm 46 years old and the last 10 years of my life, probably that some of the hardest times like clearing out and learning about myself learning about the inner workings of my mind and soul and then you know learning that I'm empathic and psychic and a medium and all of these things was so enlightening I didn't learn until I was 37 years old how to describe those things because it was like so forbidden to even mention or even like <laughs> talk about those things as a kid I probably would have been exercised or something you know through my mom's belief system but so yeah so I started I've, and, and in the last say two years I've worked with a coach I have a coach who does what I do and she holds space for my guides to come through every we do two sessions a month I do that and I need it I am also in a group coaching program as well which I've been guided into you know it, and I always say this because like if I need coaching after all the work I've done on myself I've worked on myself pretty hardcore for 10 years that's a long time and, and I have no intention of stopping. So my self-acceptance is always growing deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because I'm willing to open my mind to letting go of more things. I feel self-acceptance is stronger and it has the most powerful effect on my being when I can let go of who I was. Even yesterday, mm -hmm. even who I was yesterday, even who I was when I woke up this morning, I am a new being in every single second of the day because I'm, I'm always different and, and there's a power in the letting go. And I feel like that going to touch, like the stillness really feeds into that. The, still, the stillness allows for that to happen because going at a rate of knots, you kind of just forget things. Things get just lost in the melee of life. Whereas mm -hmm. when you slow down and you come into meditative states, just even just stopping, even just sitting down for five minutes, taking a few deep breaths, mm -hmm. like there's this really beautiful breathing practice called somatic breathing, which is a cyclic breathing, which is a deep breath in, deep breath out through the mouth in through the nose, out through the mouth. And it just brings you back into the moment, you know? So it's a strong breath in through the nose, strong breath out through the mouth, and then just continuing. Some of, Sometimes they do in through the mouth, out through the mouth, but I've been really guided. You could do either, whichever. Somatic breathing is so powerful. Getting It kind of gets into your cells. And then um, you can add movement to it, music, keeping your eyes closed, like getting up and just moving your body in ways that help shift their energy. Mm -hmm. And then from doing a more physical practice, then you can sit in meditation much more easily because mm -hmm. I've tried to just sit in meditation. I have met, done meditation for more than 20 years. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how much more, but quite a long time. I think it was 2001 when I started, 2001, 2002 when I started meditating and I haven't stopped since. Mm -hmm. So when I hear people say, I can't meditate. I'm like, well, I couldn't either, but I kept trying for 12 years. And then I felt like after 12 years, I'd done a lot of like meditation retreats and things like that, where we're doing a lot of group meditation that helped me get into the stillness. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't maintain it. 
forever. You know, I had a moment, I feel like I had a moment of enlightenment. I felt like I was touched by a deity, a very powerful Osho. I was touched by his energy field and my whole body changed. He t- I felt the touch of him in my energy field and everything changed for me that day. I didn't tell anyone that that had happened for me, <laughs> but it happened and I knew I was changed. I knew I was different. And then my journey was very, was extremely magical. That was 2015 and, or yeah, it was 2015. And so everything started to change mm-hmm. from that time. So the journey into the stillness is something that can be extremely scary because it's consciously accepting where you are right now as somewhere that is not somewhere you want to stay and allowing the void to hold you, allowing the unknowable to hold you in that place. That's not an easy thing to do. I'm doing it now. It's part of my practices, stillness practices right now. And and sitting in the unknowable for the ego mind, I, even now I'm starting to get emotional. And this is, I don't feel like this is my own emotion. Tears are welling up in my eyes. So this is almost like a response from, of the collective consciousness coming in right now going, how the fuck do we do that? You know, like, what is it? How? Like, I feel this how. And it's like, well, the mind wants to know how, but the heart knows how. So it's this really divine shift that wants to happen in the collective consciousness I know it's scary and I know it's it's a very deep journey to take but it's very needed and it's already happening it's already happening in the collective consciousness so it's just really accepting and letting go and the self-acceptance happens it helps a lot So if you're just accepting yourself and in a joy space and in more of a bliss state, you can allow the stillness to usher in much more easily. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for me, the thought of play, play and stillness, they coexist. Mm -hmm. Very much so. It's like a, you're so right. Like the energy inside the stillness can be misconstrued as too serious, Mm -hmm. but the energy inside it is very light Mm -hmm. and loving and playful. Like literally it, it bursts like beli- like if you believe in fairies, <laughs> they are completely still yet like moving. And there's this analogy of being in a spaceship that's traveling faster than the speed of light, but there's pure stillness within the ship. So there's like, there's so many juxtapositions and it, these are dichotomies of life that is very, very, very difficult for the human brain to comprehend without the experience of it so okay so there's a few deities that want to come through this is really powerful so muji he's a master of the stillness padamahansa yogananda master of the stillness there's a babaji i can see his face there's another babaji that that wants to come in he's kriya yoga that's the lineage of padamahansa yogananda so babaji is the first of the of that lineage they are masters of the stillness so if ever anyone wants to look that up it's k-r-i-y-a yoga kriya yoga and that helps you really get into the stillness so i love how you're speaking to of inside that stillness we think that it has to be so serious but we can find that little bit of play inside of it because it makes it more enticing i think to our human mind it makes it a little bit like okay it's a little less fearful. And so for that person that is thinking that it has to be serious, I'm feeling called to speak on that playfulness and that more. So now that you're channeling, I would love to just hear how we can be in that stillness in the play and help that coexist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Laughter, seeing comedy, as soon as we start clearing, this is some, some big wisdom that that's coming through. So the lighter you can make your being, the easier you can get into the stillness. <laughs> so going and into nature, being like childlike in nature, mm-hmm. like looking at all the animals and plants and the colors and being like finding the wonder in all things. And there's so much play in that and looking at the butterflies and the birds. And, you know, if you've got a pet, like playing with your dog, like looking at how much lightness and love and playful is in a puppy and you know you watch a puppy and you just laugh they're the craziest funniest little beings in the entire world you know so it's like there is play in all things as well like this world is an illusion it's it's whatever we want to create it to be whatever we focus on we create so if you're focusing on things the stillness being serious it will be serious for you but if you focus on it being playful for you it will can and will be playful for you so they want me they want me to give some examples so rather than 
picking up your phones and spending, you know, mindless time on social media, pick up your phone and Google something, Google the silence or Google play in silence or, you know, like feed into your soul rather than feeding into, you know, dopamine, you know, triggers and things like that. Like the spirit wants you to look after yourself in a new way and take responsibility for that. It's like they're showing kids like growing up, becoming adults and, and then going, oh, well, my parents didn't teach me how to do that. So I'm not going to learn it or, or I just don't know how. And then or blaming someone else for your own shortcoming where it's like, actually, Google is like the universal university, you know, like we can learn anything we want. It's just not a, a, a reasonable answer anymore. It's life-giving. We feel like it's freedom to have somebody else tell us what to do. We feel like feeling it's because we were, we've always as kids being told what to do. We get a job, we're told what to do. So then when we are, finally, we feel like we have our freedom. It feels scary when we don't have that telling us what to do. And so I would love to speak on that a little bit too, because I believe there is freedom in that stillness as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So true. What's coming through based on what you're saying, Josie, is creating healthy new boundaries for mm -hmm. yourself. In creating a boundary, you have freedom. I mean, boundaries get really misunderstood. So we like to call them sparkle boundaries because it sounds so much nicer and they're flexible. Things can come in, things can go out. So they want me to give you an example of basically creating boundaries in your life look like let's wake up at this time to meditate at this time to then maybe learn at this time, work at this time, sleep at this time, you know, those kind of boundaries. Mm -hmm. So boundary your time so that mm -hmm. you are being like conscious of what you're creating mm. and conscious of how you're spending your time. And then you have true freedom. Mm. And then they want me to talk into also freedom from the ego and freedom from needing to consume and freedom from the idea that you need more things to be complete. Mm. You are complete exactly how you are. You do not, if you have a roof over your head and food on your plate and clothes to wear, you do not need anything else. They want me to clarify, I'm not talking about a scarcity mindset. I'm talking about a wholeness mm -hmm. mindset because the speed, where the speed comes from is this desire to get more, have more, be more, have more money, have more friends, blah, blah, all bullshit. You're complete exactly as you are. You do not need more money or more clothes. Be happy and grateful with exactly what you have and love on and enjoy Every single thing that you already have, this is interesting, it's coming through to share with your audience, is choose one thing that you have in your room that you can carry with you for, say, 30 days. Mm. Just love on that thing. Give it gratitude. Absolutely appreciate the shit out of that one thing. It could be a crystal. It could be a deck of cards. It could be a little like, like object that means a lot to you. Just absolutely appreciate that little object beyond words. And see how that shifts your energy. I'm actually just in the cycle of it. I just got this message to do it myself uh, this week. And I've done it since Tuesday. And it's like I'm getting this connection to it. I've got a crystal. Mine's a little crystal. So, And I forgot to take it on my run this morning. But I'm like, she's with me in spirit. And I just, I, I had her in my mind's eye. I, I held her in my heart in gratitude, just thanking her for bringing such beautiful wisdom into my life. And, mm. and for, she talked to me, she said, I want to be your object that you, that you love on, that you appreciate and forget about buying things just for 30 days. Don't buy anything. Just be contented and complete with what you have. This is a practice of stillness. So it's, it's hard. Like stillness is a hard one to get into because as soon as you open your eyes, there's something to look at. Your eyes are always like scanning, what like analyzing. They're always doing something until you close your eyes consciously, not sleeping. That's when you can go within. But if you've got desires and thoughts and ideas and all these things swelling around in your mind of I've got to get this, I've got to be this, I've got to get that, I've got to be here, I've got to do da 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 da, da and it's just pointless trying to meditate. So the cleansing out of the desires, the cleansing out of the striving to fill a void that doesn't want to be filled with anything. Mm. The void wants to be the void. The void is there for a reason. The void is where all the magic is. The unknowable is where you discover 
newness that you can never discover if you keep filling it with shit, with materialistic stuff, with even with people, with ideas, with objects, with like continually striving to to have more stuff. It's just it's a pointless exercise. That's so hard for humans. <laughs> Because we have desires, we have wants, we want things and we want bigger goals. We have these dreams that we want to give birth to. But on my own journey, what I've learned is that the more still I am, the more that is able to work through me. That's so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in this, in the stillness and the silence that you can hear your intuition Mm -hmm. and hear what you really need and what you really, what your true desires are. So the true desires of the heart are wanting to feel unconditional love or wanting to give unconditional love or wanting to have a spiritual awakening Mm -hmm. or, you know, like these are the, this is what your soul truly wants to experience is an integration into your humanness, mm-hmm. not to be so separated anymore. The, hu- the soul wants to come and have a human experience. That is why you came to earth. It's just that the story here is that the soul doesn't mean anything and that is absolutely dichotomous to the truth. Mm-hmm. The soul desires to give you wisdom, show you the way, illuminate your truth, heighten your awareness of yourself, have you feel the deepest unconditional love that is possible. That's the truth of your being. This is what your soul desires for you. And is there such a thing as a separation between a spirit, a woman, and a human? Is that a separation or is that, or is it, are we just pure soul? Are we just pure spirit or are we that spirit? human woman like i would love to know that if that's are you talking about within one person yes there is no separation you are the soul we could we couldn't be existing here without the soul it's just the ego has taken over mm. so the identification to the physical form which is the ego mm. has taken over and tries to convince you that that's all that exists mm. so that's what's happened on the human realm this this earth realm right now is that <laughs> the ego wants to tell you that oh yeah, you, you don't need the soul. You know, it tries to talk you out of your intuition. Mm-hmm. It talks you out of the bliss, of mm-hmm. the magic. And it's like, hey, like the magic is in the soul and wants to come and play. Literally lighten your load, take away your problems, help you with the relationships, help you attract your true love. Because if your soul is just sitting in the background doing nothing, it can't be magnetic where it needs to be in your life to attract new relationships, new friendships, expanding your world. You probably have more abilities. You might have new employment, like literally bust your world wide open is what the soul can and will do once you let it in, once you let it come and play, once you learn how to drop your ego and learn how to play in other realms. We're multidimensional beings. And that is in stillness. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Meditation practices, stillness practices. So float tanks are a great way to start to get your whole physical mind, body, spirit still sensory deprivation they really can be really affordable on groupon and things like that so that's a practice a stillness practice tai chi is another awesome stillness practice that helps you usher the stillness into your life without having to be completely still because your mind sometimes it can is more easily focused martial martial art forms really beautiful like krav maga krav maga is channeling in that once you've like exerted yourself you can come into stillness way easier so after Mm -hmm. a run you can be still more easier more after a a big dance you can be Mm -hmm. still more easily so it's like over exerting yourself and then coming into a stillness place like trying to do some meditation or what what have you or group meditation is another way to feel the energy more powerfully Mm -hmm. as well than than just it within your own mind guided meditations awesome things like that can help you to initiate these practices and then if you don't like them try something that you really like and so if you don't like five minutes try two minutes three minutes four minutes keep going until you find something that you truly love doing and they truly want to commit to doing on a daily basis because it will absolutely change your life and that's the thing you have to put in that work and you have to decide and commit to doing it or else it's never going to happen. And the big aha I just had when you were speaking about the soul and spirit and human and woman coming together and there is no separation, but our ego wants to take over is all day 
even when you get that spiritual awakening and you're feeling that bliss, your ego will tell you something that sounds so true. It feels so true. Like you don't know what you're doing. What you're doing isn't working. It's not working right now. You're not doing it right. But you're like, no, I am doing it right. I'm listening. But you don't know that that's your ego talking. So how can we begin to start recognize that ego versus the light that wants to come through? Mm -hmm. This is such a beautiful question. Thank you. (laughs) Generally, the ego will put you down. That's the MO of the ego. It it generally doesn't have many good things to say about you. Not many positive things. And it'll generally be louder Mm. than your intuition. It'll be more up in your face. It'll come from a different place in your body. So a good practice would be just sit and take three deep breaths and your ego is centered in your mind. So usually things that you hear in your ego are like coming out your mind that can be wrapped in frustration, anger, pain, Mm -hmm. reaction. Generally, the ego is a reactionary response to situations, whereas your intuition will be a feeling. It could be in your gut. It could be in your heart. It could be a, like when you say gut feeling, that's your intuition. Mm. It can be a voice, but it's going to be a quiet voice. So if you're too noisy and too centered in the ego, you're not going to hear it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you do hear it and, and your ego talks you out of it. Mm-hmm. And so it's the feeling of the intuition. It'll always be telling you something that's uplifting for you. Mm. It'll tell you a direction that you will grow and expand in. And then the ego will be usually it's a shutting down, more of a shutting down energy or a boastful energy. Or, you know, when you know when someone's in their ego, just look look around you, look on the news, look at all the politicians, look, you know, just look around you and, and start to see and really observe people in their ego. And then you'll notice, oh, I was in my ego then massively because I was talking about myself the whole time. I didn't care what anyone else had to say. So those kind of situations that you're in your ego and when you're super feeling like, oh my God, I just want to know what this, like, I want to know all about this person and I want to know their journey and where they got, you know, like that is more in your intuition, more in your excite, like the excitement about someone else is more centered in your intuition. Mm-hmm. Those are cool things to look for. So it's easier to recognize it in someone else <laughs> most of the time because, you know, a lot of the time we don't want to see what's in ourselves. So that's a cool way to start is like find other people in their ego and how annoying it is and how it makes everyone around them feel shitty. You know, mm-hmm. No one feels good about when someone's just talking about themselves the whole time and doesn't care to know about anyone else's journey. So it's like be observant and see how it feels. Finding that evidence piece. Exactly, yeah, because you can't argue against it. When you see it and feel it and know how it feels, it's like, oh, God, I do not want to be like that. And it's easier to change the behavior. Oh, my gosh, this conversation is lighting me up. It's lighting me up. I have so much more questions. Can I keep asking? (laughs) Of course, of course. (laughs) Okay, so suffering is is so much right now. And when we are suffering, people are thinking, I almost have to suffer because of the collective suffering. And I, in my practice, have been learning how to almost alchemize that and help hold that. That's been my practice lately in meditation. And it almost feels too much. It almost feels too much. And so I know that it's a work in progress that I'm learning for myself. So when people are saying that they are, they are feeling like down and they're feeling that heaviness, that suffering that is in the collective, how can we better alchemize that? How can we be that light that we want to be? Firstly, spirit wants to talk about the suffering piece Mm -hmm. and you do not have to suffer. No one has to suffer. (sighs) It's an illusion. So create a fucking awesome illusion. (laughs) <laughs> and then also it's like oh they're suffering oh the collective is suffering so I, I better suffer so that I'm in with the sufferers or I'm in with the you know group if you like and and spirit was is saying that's very normal in humanity to do that and it's okay to do that to have made that mistake it's a mistake and actually mistakes are awesome because they're just a learning opportunity and they're saying that that ha- is like a, a collective codependence that is a, it's a learned behavior. Mm-hmm. People have learned that, you know, even from some things your parents used to say, like, mm-hmm. you know, no, you can't have that. You're taught sometimes that if someone else is suffering, that that's just the way it is, you know, that you don't get to challenge that. Mm-hmm. And that's a load of bullshit. So, you know, that we're changing that paradigm. You know, it's quite an old paradigm anyway. So about like sharing your light is 
you can choose, you can be that. So first of all, it's the maintenance of the light within for your own journey, for yourself. So you must put yourself first. And this will rewrite codependency codes within you as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have a tendency to get affected by other people's emotions or allow somebody else's demeanor or mood to affect you and dim your light, the first thing is to know that you're a sovereign being on this earth and no one can tell you or affect you in any way unless you allow it. So that's number one, is to maintain your sovereignty and they want me to talk about even a situation. It's like mask wearing. Like I didn't want to wear a mask. So I go around and I don't wear masks unless somebody really tries to aggress me. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to, I'm going to choose now to wear a mask because you're doing that. You know, so I choose, like I'm a non-mask wearing person and I, I did play the game for a while, but it's challenging when something is going on that you do not want to do, challenge it. Don't just do it mindlessly. If you really don't want to do something, challenge it. You can challenging it, challenge things in a really positive way. So it's maintaining the sovereignty of your own being first and foremost and creating and maintaining the light within you is another commitment to your own journey, to your light journey, to your light workership, to being in service to humanity, to fulfilling the purpose that you came here to fulfill. So what does that look like to you? Does that look like being happy most of the time, loving on people, telling them how amazing they are, you know, talking to the cash register anywhere that you're going, you know, shopping or grocery shopping, wherever you are. This is like moments, conscious moments of connection are some of the most beautiful ways to maintain your own light is by giving it away. Mm. This is, I mean, Christ talked about this. All masters talk about this, you know. <laughs> it's like the, the most beautiful way for you to maintain your shine is to give it away. You're not shining for yourself. We came here to be in service to each other. And if every single being on this planet goes, I want to create bliss and joy for someone else today. I want to look after my brother, my sister, my, you know, my elders I want to look after everyone today. If every single one of us had that, that ethos and that ideology and lived by it and committed to it, we would all be looked after because everyone's looking after everyone else. That is the way to maintain yeah. your own shine. And literally, as I'm saying this, like this channel, everyone listening to this is getting a huge crown, like a full body activation in this information right now, right? You can feel it, right? That the, the channel, my crown just like burst open and then from my sacral and my root chakra, another huge activation went down into Mother Earth. It was this huge cracking open of the energy. <laughs> you know, like you felt it, right? Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's so fucking beautiful. So, yeah, it's looking after each other. It's having that intention. Connect anywhere you are. There's so many ways to connect. If someone has a dog, you can be like, oh, what a beautiful dog or whatever it is that lights you up. You know, just as, as you said, Josie, that this conversation is lighting you up. So let's get <laughs> some more. So find what lights you up and go get some more. Oh, that answer is beautiful. That beautiful. Mm. So, so often when I am in that flow and my crown chakra is open and I am feeling like, oh my gosh, I am in so much alignment. What I find is it almost feels too good to be true. <laughs> and I know that the moms that are listening can probably attest to this. Like it's going so good. Life feels so good. You're in such bliss. You're so happy. But you're like, when is the other shoe going to drop? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a serious reality in this world. <laughs> What's coming through is you get what you focus on. So if you're expecting something to go wrong, it will. So it's like stay in the positive mindset the flow, the synchronicity, stay focusing on the, on the bliss that's being created and it will perpetuate. So true. Our thoughts are creative and we're creating all the time. Mm. So beautiful. Sarah, this conversation, thank you. Pleasure. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you for sharing your light. Thank, thank you. you for aligning and attuning me today. <laughs> like, yes, I feel so good after this conversation. And I would love our listeners to know where they can get more of this and where they can support you and be in your space. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I have a website. It's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, J-Strong, S-T-R-O-N-G.com. And my offerings page is where you can come and play 
in the stillness and the fun my offerings are just that we always have a ton of fun and they're super activating i do awakening the divine feminine workshops and deep dives also starseed activation workshops and deep dives as well we can do one-on-one -on -one. you can come to my meditation group on a tuesday 4 p.m pst it's 7 p.m in the east coast so I would love to hear from you. Also, my Instagram is Sarah, S-A-R-A-H underscore T-H-E underscore strong. So come and say hi. I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, if you'd like clarification on anything that came through today, send me a message on Messenger on Facebook. I'm Sarah Strong on Facebook as well. So yeah, come and say hi. I'd love to hear from you. Yes. Oh, at the end of every conversation, I love to open the floor and let you speak and speak what is on your heart after having this conversation, what you feel called to share. Thank you. So just remember that you have a diamond within you, whether you know it or not, whether you are in tune with it or not, no matter how you feel, no matter where you think you are in your life, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Once you can truly accept that and assimilate that information and truly love that everything will change just remember you have a diamond that you ch can choose to shine in in any moment there is always so much help around if you if you need it if you feel like you need support there's always i'm here josie's here there's so many places you can find help and support so you're not alone remember that no matter it's hard work out there at the moment so remember that you are not alone and that you have so much divine support the channel today was so amazing. You know, spirit just wants to show up for you. Just mm -hmm. all you have to do is ask. Beautiful, powerful, amazing. Sarah, I love the work that you're doing. I want to command you. I want to like send you some love. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you so much for showing up today and sharing this space with us on the Make Life Fun Show. Pleasure, beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks everyone for listening. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening to the make life fun show i hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little little gems little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart that you are not just listening but you're going to do something about it i want you to be fired up so yes so we come once a week come back listen to us here we are on all podcasts places you listen we are also on youtube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show. Follow us. Leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, yeah, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.